יכולים לך ממה? So this is a shiur for Rosh Chodesh Elul and I named this shiur Hidden Treasure and I hope you'll find it because Elul can be just another month if we're not going to know what its value it can be just another month of the year just going away without even us noticing that it was here And before we start, I want to say thank you for Mishpachat Chandali and Racheli for hosting this shiur and to bless you and your home and everything that you have. That the bounty that you put on the table is going to be a bounty in your life always. And that everything that you ask is going to come true. And there's going to be... Blessings and happiness in this house. This shiur is dedicated to Eloi Nishmat, Rachel's grandmother, Miriam Bat Hassan. And to my daughter, who also died, I told her that I will also give her to Shoshana Bat Miriam, my daughter. Okay, we'll write it later. And also we're dedicating this shiur for Rachel's birthday, that's going to be on Shabbat. It's the 18th birthday. So if anybody wants to get a blessing from Rachel on her birthday, you need to come to Shul. I'll come to Shul. Or I'll come to the house after that. <laughs> so, um, when we are looking at uh, all kinds of uh, sources that we have, according to the Hasidut, Chodesh um, Elul, the month of Elul, is a month that the, they call it the Hamelech Basadeh. The king is in the field. Meaning, if all year Hashem is sitting uh, above the seven skies, on his uh, Kisei Kavod and he's not very accessible to us. There's a lot of layers that, needs to, that we need to go through in order to get to him. The month of Elul, the king, is coming to us. It's, uh, the movement is different, meaning that he's here among us, very accessible, very near. So it's much easier for our Tfilot to get to him. There's less uh, dividers between us, less, um, less distance between us. He's very accessible. You don't need, there's no guards, there's no uh, walls, there's no gates, there's nothing. He's, you don't need to go through any, any uh, soldiers or any people that uh, protect the king. He's in the field, not in his uh, palace and he is very accessible to us. So it's a very good thing to know that if during the year sometimes you feel that Hashem is really far away from you, even if you feel that way, know that it's not true because he's here and he's near. He's the, in the lowest, lowest, lowest part of the, of the Malchut, right here among us. So this is a very important that we're going to take advantage of this time until Yom Kippur and even until Hoshana Rabbah um, to make use of, the, of, his, of his closeness and his presence between us. And this is also the last month of the year because Tishrei a new year is coming. And um, it's very important that, that we are basically in the gate of the new year. The month of Elul is basically a very big gate ushering us into the month of Tishrei. And Arad Shalom Noach Berzovsky and Etivot Shalom is saying that we need to pay attention to this because everything goes by the head, meaning the locomotor, which is the head of the train, is the one that pulls the train and all the rest of the cars are following the head, the locomotor. So the head of the year, which is Tishrei, is what's going to pull us for the entire year. So the way we're going to build this month, this is how the entire year is going to go. So the preparation for Tishrei is now, in Elul. This is when we prepare for Elul. Um, 
פרשת ראה, that we read on Shabbat, is also signifies the fact that we are on the cusp of Elul, because the acronyms of the word ראה, ראש א' ה', is ראה, Elul הגיעה. Look, Elul is here. Pay attention. This parasha is always being read uh, on the Shabbat before or exactly on Rosh Chodesh Elul, always. Um, so this is basically the time of Chodesh Elul when we need to be like accountants, you know, make a column of what good, what's bad, uh, what we did, what we didn't do, what we wanted to do, what we need to correct, uh, what we're happy with. Um, what do we think we need to atone for? Make like you know, like a, like um, a person that has a business and is looking at the books and looking to balance the books. So we are balancing our personal book now, because in Rosh Hashanah there's books that being opened in the sky, and we want to be written in the book of life, right? So we need to do the preparation and the accounting and balancing before, not to wait for the last minute and then say, oh, ah, I forgot, I, I needed to do something and now it's too late. We have a whole month, basically 40 days until Yom Kippur to do that, to prepare ourselves spiritually and, and mentally to, to take upon ourselves good decisions, to take, to, to take upon ourselves um, things that we wanted to do the entire year but neglected to do. So now it's the time because the year is about to end. And once the year ends, that's it. We, we are in a new year. Uh, however, if we don't know the power of this month, nothing is going to motivate us to do anything about it. We need to understand how much it is... Um, valuable and how much good it can bring us in order for us to, to make the effort and do something about it. Arav Menachem Weiss, the one I just blessed for Refua Shlema, Arav Menachem Meir Ben Chana, Shemishlach Lo Refua Shlema, he's telling that uh, there was a Din Torah, like a trial with one of the rabbis Name Eliezer Mimitz, Alav um, Shalom, and the two Jews are coming to him with a with a problem, and uh, the the story is like this: one Jew bought from a Gentile uh, a barrel of of tin, um, and this Jew sold the barrel to another Jew. The second Jew, when he opened the barrel, he found a bag of money inside the barrel. So the first Jew is coming and saying, the money is mine. I sold just a barrel of tin. I didn't sell the money. So they went to the rabbi for him to, to decide between them, to make a judgment for them. So the rabbi... His psaq was, since the, the first Jew didn't know that, that, uh, that the barrel contained money, it's not his, and it belongs to the Jew that bought, that bought it. So, Arav Elimelech Biderman saying, this is an allegory for a Jew or a person that doesn't know what he has is in, in his hand, so he cannot appreciate it. This Jew thought this is just a barrel of, of tin. He didn't bother to look inside and see, is it really just tin inside? If he opened it and looked inside, he might have found the bag with the money. So, in order to know that you have a treasure in your hand, you have to know that what you hold in your hand is a treasure. Otherwise, you would um, think it's just Nothing, just a stone. Somebody that doesn't know what a diamond is is going to look at it and say, just a piece of glass. It's nothing. It's worthless. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. But some, somebody that knows what a diamond is can appreciate the value 
of the diamond and he is gonna <laughs> keep it close to his heart and you know so if you don't know the value of what you're holding you have nothing so what happened in this month that is so valuable for us in this month Moshe Rabbeinu is standing in the heavens and praying to Hashem to forgive Am Yisrael for Chet Egel, the sin of the calf. He's begging for 40 days, from Aleph Elul until Yom Kippur, 40 days. He's standing in the heavens, Har Sinai, and praying and asking for Hashem to forgive Am Yisrael. To forgive. Really forgive. And, and, and this is what he did. He said, because at the beginning Hashem said, I'm going to kill them. Moshe Rabbeinu said, no, it's not enough for me that you're going to leave them alive. It's not enough for me that you're not going to kill them. I need you that you're going to forgive them. I need that you to forgive them completely. And, and he was so adamant about it that he told Hashem, and if you're not going to do it, erase me from your book. Erase me. And by the way, in this uh, parasha, I don't remember which parasha it is, but there's a parasha in, in the Sefer Bamidbar, I don't know how you said Bamidbar in English, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the, fourth one, yeah. the fourth one. The fourth one. I don't know. I don't know which one. Uh, um, Something with a D. I don't know. The, 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 no, the no. Komodudu, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, okay, so... There's, there's a parasha in, in, uh, in a Chumash that the name of Moshe is not mentioned at all. The name of Moshe is not mentioned at all. Because he said to Hashem, if you're not going to forgive them, erase me. I don't want to even be mentioned. So all I did for Am Israel, I, do, I don't care about it. Erase it all. It's nothing. It was nothing to me if you're not going to forgive them. Forgive them. Please forgive them. And after 40 days, Hashem agrees to forgive. And he says the words, Salachti kidvarecha. I forgave as you said, as you asked, as you said. And then it says, Ki bayom hazeh yechaper alechem letahir etchem mikol chatotechem. On that day, Hashem is going to atone you and going to purify you from all your sins. Before Hashem, you're going to be pure. It's going to be Shabbat Shabbaton, Yelachem. It's not just Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbaton, a special, very special day. And the initem et nafshotechem, you're going to torture yourself on that day, Chukat Olam. This is a law forever and ever. And that day, when Hashem said, Salachti Kidvarecha, was Yom Kippur. Meaning that the entire month is a month of prayer. A month of prayer that is accepted. A month of prayer that is not even in the will of Hashem, that he didn't even want to do that. He, it wasn't his will to forgive. He wanted to kill everybody. It is a little hot. Okay. And, uh, and, um, and I already told you before that there's a um, Chag, holiday. Chag in Hebrew is also a word that symbolizing a circle. When we say Chag B'Ma'agal, okay, Chag B'Ma'agal meaning going around, around in a circle. So the word Chag is not just holiday, it actually symbolizes a circle that moves, meaning that there is energy that is moving in a circle every year and new. It's going in a circle. So the same energy that was back then in those 40 days between Aleph Elul, the first of Elul, and Yom Kippur is now present in our time. It's the same energy that comes from above because it's Chag in the Ma'agal. The energy is going round and round. It's called Ma'agal Hashanah, the circle of the year, right? So the same energy comes all every time I knew and knew. That's why when somebody have a birthday, we say Mazal Tov on, on his Jewish birthday. Why Mazal Tov? What is Mazal? It's not luck. <laughs> mazal is something that is nozel. It's like dripping. 
where it is dripping for, from it's dripping from above the day of this person that was born on that day his luck is greater than any other day and it's dripping from above because it's that energy that comes to him that's why on that day a person can bless other people because there's more than any other day for him on that day mazal it's it's dripping on them so the same light that one was back then during elul during those 40 days the same um, energy that was there בימים ההם בזמן הזה the same way we say בחנוכה בימים ההם בזמן הזה it's the same the same way it was back then it's now, it's today and Hashem he said כי ביום הזה יחפר עליכם on that day he's going to atone you he didn't say on the day on, on that day he said on this day meaning that every year and new it's this day it's like a present it's the same the day present is not, uh, it's not past And it's not in future. <laughs> it's now. Ki bayom hazeh, right now. Right now you're going to be atoned. Why? Because this is the day I said, Salachti ki dvarecha. This is the day Hashem said, I forgave as you asked. So this energy, this light, exists on that day. That's why we say that it's umo shel ayom echaper. Meaning, the day itself atones for all your sins. You don't need to do anything, basically. All you need to do is fast. The day itself atones for you. Even if you're not going to shul, if you're not praying five prayers, even if you don't do anything, the fact that you are torturing yourself on that day, the, the day itself, its energy, is doing the work for you. Like, basically, you don't need to do much. And actually, a lot of people... It's very hard for them, they're fasting and they cannot go to shul. They're staying in bed. And it's fine. They're still doing Yom Kippur. They're still getting all the benefits of Yom Kippur. So, when we are ordering now, it's like going to, you have a waiter and he comes to your table and says, what do you want? What do you want from Hashem? And you give him the order. I want forgiveness. I want luck, I want parnasa, I want to lose weight, I want to be happy, I want my sons to get, to get married, I want to be a grandma, I want, I, I want my children to be um, happy, I want to have Shlom Bait, I want Mashiach, I want Am Israel to be happy, I don't want the Palestinians to kill any more Jews. I, I want, I, I'm, it's like you have a waiter and you can give them, you can give your order, And your order is supposed to be accepted because right now it's the time to bring it to you. Whatever you need, you can ask. This is the time. Bye, Motik. What is the The same strength Moshe Rabbeinu had back then is actually passing on to us right now to ask and to receive in the same manner that he asked and received from Hashem. Just don't leave, don't leave the prayer. Don't stop praying. Don't let go. You need to do something. You cannot just, you know, say, you need to do something, which is ask. And asking is praying, basically. It doesn't have to be from the Siddur. You can pray in your own words. Just ask what you need. This is the time. Hashem is here, is near. The energy is right. This is the time. The same strength Moshe Rabbeinu had is that Dore Dorot for generation and generation is passed on to us. To ask and to receive. Because Hashem, it says, Shomeat filat kol Any mouth that is praying for him, Hashem is listening. He's not only listening, he's very close. There are no barriers now. So he's, he's hearing everything. Is here. So Elul, its acronyms, Aleph Lamed, Vav Lamed, Ani Le Dodi Ve Dodi Li. This is from Shira Shirim. And in Shira Shirim, Dodi is the name that is referring to Hashem. And 
And we said, Ani le dodi, meaning Ani, which is Am Israel, le dodi to Hashem, the dodi li, and Hashem is to me. It's like a husband and a wife. It's like a wedding. Shir is, is is talking about a man and a woman, but it's basically it's analogy of of uh, Hashem and Am Israel, Knesset Israel. Akala, the bride is Knesset Israel, and the groom is um, is is Hashem. <coughs> so this is basically what it says. Ani le dodi ve dodi li, because this is this time right now that whatever I'm gonna ask and I'm gonna, gonna bring on to Hashem, He's gonna bring it back to me. He's gonna He's gonna give me what I'm asking Him. So there's um, a guy named uh, Ronen Karta that he's writing every day in uh, WhatsApp. Beautiful, beautiful things. So he's telling a story about a child that goes to his uh, teacher and he says, I don't understand how come on Elul we are calling uh, Hashem uncle, Dodi. What happened? Usually it's Avinu Malkenu, our father, our king. Um, how come he become uncle in, in Elul? I mean, why, why is like degraded from, from, from king uh, to, to an uncle? So the teacher tells, tells him, it's very nice. He said, I'll, t- I'll tell you what the difference. A father can be very spoiling and loving and, you know, caressing you and hugging you. But he has also a job to discipline you. Right? A father. Sometimes he needs to straighten you on, on your way. And, uh, and sometimes when a father does it, he's not very nice. Or he doesn't... The child doesn't experience the father as, as being nice uh, because, you know, he doesn't um, give him what everything he wants. He puts boundaries. He's saying no. He doesn't, you know, it's a father. Sometimes he is angry. Sometimes he punishes. However, uncle only only pampers you. He only hugs you. He only brings you presents. He's only doing kuti muti and... And that's it. He's like he's nice to you. He never he's never upset with you. He's never disciplining you. He's never angry with you. It's not his job to do that. So that's why Shlomo Melech chose the term Dodi, like my uncle, <laughs> because the it's it's a it's a different entity now. It's not the disciplinary. It's not the one that punishes. It's not the one that gets angry. It's only the one that's pampering you, giving you present, loving you and hugging you and making you feel good. But in order to feel all of that, you need to get closer. You need to bring yourself closer. The, the king is in the field, Amelech Basadeh, but we need to go there. You cannot just sit at home and wait for him to come at the door. You need to do something in order to get there. And the way to do it is to do a little change something different during this month. Do something different. Move yourself. Move something inside yourself. Make a change. There's, um, there's two things in the world that motivate us or causing us to move, to do something. One is pleasure and the other is suffering. The only two things. Whatever is pleasure for us, we want to do more of it. And whatever is causing us pain or suffering, we want to get away from it. So when, when we're talking about pleasure, it's like staying put. We, we're staying there. We want to stay there. We want more of it. Yeah, It's motivating us to get more of it, but it basically doesn't move us to do anything different because we already have from it. However, when we are uncomfortable with something, we want to move away from it, meaning we need to change something in our behavior. We need to change something in the way we think about things, or seeing things, in order for us to move away from the source of the suffering or the pain, because we, it's uncomfortable for us. So, 
We are looking in this Chodesh Elul and we are saying, we have two choices. We can do more of what we already do with a lot of love and have more kavana, more meaning in what we are doing, which is fine. It's, a, it's again, it's a change. And it's a nice change. But you can upgrade. You can upgrade yourself and demand a little more from yourself and do something that is less comfortable and requires more energy and more effort from you which is do something that is uncomfortable. Go out of your comfort zone. Get, get, away, get away from something that is comfortable and do something uncomfortable in order for you to, to really grow. Right? So, when we are talking about tshuva, this is the month of Lasot Tshuva. What does it mean, Lasot Tshuva? Tshuva in Hebrew is an answer. Uh, answer to what? What's the question? What are we answering exactly? So the, the word really tshuva is not really answer. It comes from the word lashuv, meaning to come back. Come back from where? Where are we coming back from? We're coming back from getting fa- further away. So we're getting back near. We're coming back to, to be near, closer to where we were before. It's very similar to the cycle that, uh, that, that the couple has in their lives, right? We are together, we get used to being together, and then once we get used to each other company, each of us is doing his own thing, and without even noticing, we're getting further and further away because we're not taking care of bringing us closer together. It requires an effort. It was an effort from both sides to come closer together when we're talking about a couple. Mm-hmm. Right? So Hashem already did His part. He came. He did, he did His part of I'm coming closer to you. Now it's your turn to come closer to me. You need to do something also in order to come closer. And this cycle is happening every year because every year we're coming closer and then Hashem in Yom Kippur is going back up again to, the, to his Kisei Kavod and we are left over here and slowly we're getting further and further apart especially in the feeling that's why we have this month now to work on getting back closer together to do something to come back this is Tshuva Tshuva meaning come back Lashuv to come back so <clears throat> we have 40 days because 40 days in, in Judaism symbolizes uh, a transfer, a transfer, um, yeah, like a move, like four, 40 weeks of pregnancy, 40 measures of water in the mikveh. There's a lot of 40 that represents change. So it's a, it's a move of a change. So we are moving for 40 days. We, we, we're making a movement of moving in order to move from point A to point B and to get to Yom Kippur in a, in a different way. So one of the things... Second. One of the things that is a custom in... Um, in all the communities of Eretz Israel, Am Israel, is to say twice a day, Mizmor Kaf Zayin B'Teilim, 27 in Teilim, morning and evening, after Shacharit and after Mincha or Arvit, depends on your uh, 27. Twice uh, a day. Twice a day. And it's, it's usually been saying from Rosh Chodesh Elul until Yom Kippur, and some uh, um, communities even continue until Oshana Rabbah, even until Patkatava, uh, until until then, twice a day, morning and evening. It's not uh, such a big deal. <coughs> so the um, the mizmo is starting like this. Um, Le David, meaning David the Melech wrote it. 
אדוני אורי ואישי, יש לך תרגום, מתחילים עם תרגום לאנגלית? לאנגלז? למה אני לא יכול? אה? נתת לי לאנגלית? לא, נתתי לך עם עברית. טוב, מקסימום אפשר לפתוח את האינטרנט. יש לך אנגלית? יש בספר בחמישה חומשי תורה הכחול? תהילים? לא. זה חמישה חומשי תורה, זה לא... אפשר לפתוח אינטרנט. תפתחי לנו אינטרנט. הנה, הנה, סימי פותחת לנו. זהו, על ווילי תהילים. 27. איזה מקום אתה הולך? Which side is this? Chabad is good. Okay, no, Chabad is good. Chabad is good because some translations, I'm like, what are you saying? Okay, so I'll read it. לדוד, אדוני אורי ואישי, ממי יירא, אדוני מעוז חיי, ממי יפחד. Of David, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the... stronghold of my life, from whom shall I be frightened? This is how the, it, it starts. And then he says, בקרוב עליי מרעים לאכול את בשרי, צרי ואויבי לי ימח כשלו ונפלו. English, when I, this is too much for me, this English, I don't understand the words. גם את לא, תני לסימי. Number two? Yeah, I don't understand the words. When evil, evil doers draw near to me to devour my flesh, okay. my adversaries and my enemies against me, they stumbled and fell. Very nice. I'm sure for all of you. No, no, I speak two. We're starting with the two. So it says, Adonai Ori is my light. And the Midrash, the Midrash, Vayikra says, Rosh Hashanah, this is, this is meant so, Rosh, Rosh Hashanah, Yish'i, my salvation, meaning Yom Kippur. And then it says, that later on, Kitz Peneni Basuka, when he is going to shelter me inside the Sukkah, in, meaning Chag Sukkot. That's why most of the people continue to say it even more than 40 days, after Rosh Hashanah Rabbah, which is the end of, yes. of Sukkot. That's Kenazim, that's what somebody said. Ken. Right. It's, it's, again, it's Minhag, and, and again, yes. some, some people in Israel, even if they're not Ashkenazim, they adopted the, the, the Minhag. Uh-huh. So this Mizmor is Mizmor of Tshuva, of coming back. Because again, we said, there's 40 days, it's like a new birth. This is how we enter the new year. This is... a very small thing to do in order for you to make an effort of change and prepare yourself coming near and bring yourself near. And it says like this, this is how strong it is. Arab Yaakov Rokach in his book Sha'aret Fila is saying that Kol HaOmer Mizmor LeDavid Adonai Uri Vishi Everyone that says this Mizmor מראש חודש אלול עד אחרי שמחת תורה, from the ראש חודש אלול until after שמחת תורה, אפילו גזרה רעה נתונה עליו מן השמיים יכול לבטלה. Even if you have a, a bad decree that is written on you from heaven, you are able to cancel it. This is how strong it is. הוא מעביר מעליו כל המתרג, המקטרגים וכל גזרות קשות ורעות. And it passes over you. Everybody that wants bad on you, everybody that's saying bad things on you or wishes you bad things will not be able to touch you. And all bad decrees and, or, or uh, hard or, uh, or uh, difficult decrees are going to be erased. The Yotze Zakai Badin and you're going to come uh, out of the judgment. Oh, Zakai. Not guilty. Not guilty. No, not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Umuvtachlo 
הוא מובטח לו, he is promised, שיוציא ימיו ושנותיו בטוב, meaning he's gonna have all his days good for the rest of his life, וירב לו, and it's gonna taste good, his life will be good and, and has good taste, he's gonna enjoy it. Do you, can you imagine that? Saying twice a day, this is more, and you're getting all of that? It's unbelievable. <laughs> no, just to, and I'll explain why just to. Even you have a bad decree on you, you can erase it, you can cancel it. It's unbelievable. So Ari HaKadosh is saying, he's explaining why. In the Rosh Chodesh Elul, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us um, Shoshana. Who oh, is Shoshana? רוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזלוזל
Every time we're praying on Rosh Hashanah, every time we're doing Slichot, on Yom Kippur we're saying it 26 times. And when we're reading this Mizmor twice a day, 13 and 13 is... 26. 26. And 26 is... Shem Hashem. Shem Hashem. Wow. So you have, you have the entire... Entire circle now we have. So, uh, Rab uh, Adin Israel uh, saying in his uh, translation or explanation to, to this uh, Mizmor, it, it has only, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 14 verses. It's not long. Mm-hmm. He said that it's uh, a chapter that is combined from thanks and prayer together and he is based on um, Chazal on our who is Chazal in English? in English our, our wise you have Chazal in English yeah, I forgot our sages? Sages. sages sages it's not really Chazal but uh, it's not really the same ok so our sages is saying yeah, but it's not the same. He is based on what they say in, in the Mishnah. Noten hoda'a l'she'avar v'tzo'ek l'atid, meaning giving thanks on, for the past and yell, meaning pray, for the future. And he is emphasizing that this uh, Mizmur is basically a song of getting closer to Hashem, but he is using the word Dvekut. And Dvekut in Hebrew comes from the root of Devek, and Devek is glue. So it's, it's not just about getting close, it's like glue yourself, like glue yourself to, to, to Hashem, right? So the question is, immediately you're going to ask yourself a question, how can you both say thank you and, and, and yell? How, how do you do that both mm-hmm. together? It's it's contradicting each other. Either you are thinking or you are, you know, yelling and praying and crying from the bottom of your heart. So in order to answer that, like two years ago, again, one of the women that I'm taking materials from in WhatsApp and reading a lot from what she's saying, her name is Mayan and she lives in Tzfat, in Eretz Israel. I never met her, but like we became friends just from WhatsApp. So whenever I have a deep question, this is my... Uh, Mayan. Mayan. I'm going to ask Mayan. So I ask her, I don't understand how, how, how does it sit together. It, it's, uh, it's mind-blowing to me. How can, how can, you, how can you judge everything in favorably? and really accept all-hearted that everything is for the best and everything is good together with David the Melech that he is, he is, he is yelling and, and he's praying and he's crying to Hashem to save him all the time when you're reading Tehillim you encounter so many places where David the Melech is crying for Hashem help me, save me from my enemies everybody wants to kill me my son wants to kill me my brother wants to kill me everybody hates me Everybody's chasing him. So I don't understand how can you do both. Either you are thanking Hashem that everything is fine in your life. Thank you. Or you're crying and saying, help me, save me. I don't understand. So she said, she's writing to me back. She said, Smadar Ahuva, beloved Smadar. This is how she writes to me. I think this is not contradiction. However, it is two extreme situations that complete each other. One, first of all, if Hashem already brought you to this place, to this point in your life, it's for the best. That's for, first of all. And this is what it, what, it, what it means. Thank you for the past. Thanking for the past. Because He already brought me here. Right? I'm here. But from this moment onwards, you have to cry to Hashem to save you and ask Him that in the future He's going to 
um, be merciful be, with you even more than before. And this is what it means to thank for the past and pray for the future. And this, and I answer that, oh, this is amazing. Like it's uh, sweeter than honey words. Mm -hmm. I, it made so, because suddenly I understood it's not a continuum, it's a circle. Mm -hmm. This is how I saw it. I, I, instead of uh, I'm not understanding how can you be, you can be either here or here, I suddenly understood it's not here or here, it's a circle, it's, it's connecting, it's all together, meaning there's no beginning and no end really, because if you're thinking for the past and you're crying for the future, it's not contradicting, it's, com it's completing, uh, completing each other, it's like a, a whole circle, a complete circle, it's like two that is one, mm -hmm. in, in a way. So in my mind I understood that the situation I'm, I'm in right now, it's not present, it's past. Mm -hmm. It's already been, mm -hmm. meaning it's already happened to me. That's why I'm here in this moment. But I'm here in this moment because whatever happened in the past, so it's already past. And it's, it was a very new and foreign thought to me and you know, it's like new shoes. It takes time to get used to the thought that it's really not right now. It's already happened. And I, I shouldn't look at it as if it's happened to me right now. <coughs> I, I reached this point because something that happened in the past. Like the consequences? So, Does I, that? I don't know if like it's a result. You can look at it there like that. But when you say consequence, it's like something bad, bad ha happened. It's like... Whatever happened, already happened. So, so there's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. So I can just look at it right now and say, okay, I can, I can change the way I view it. And even though it's not pleasant, I can understand at least in my head that it's for the best, probably. Even though I can't feel it, but I know it. So I understand it belongs to the past, not to right now. And also understand that even though I'm here, since it's already been and it's past, I can ask something else for the future. I can cry for something else. And this is why when we're reading Tehillim and we see Amalek David doing both, now we can understand how it's possible to do both. Right? It's, it's, it's like if, if, you are, if you are thinking for everything that brought you to this point, that built us and made us who we are, right? So we are revealing basically the love that Hashem has for us and we are revealing the love that we have <coughs> to ourselves. And, and, and this is the time to invite or order the change that you want, right? You, you, are, you, you are now open to it. You are now available to it. Well, before you couldn't. You, you know, when, when, when I read Tehillim, I feel like like every time like you were saying, and it's exact, like now it's like, for me, it's like more uh, like a light bulb, like right yeah. now in my, my brain. Like David the Melech, although like he's like suffering, but like the way he puts the words, he knows in his heart, in his being, that he's being saved. Right. Like that's that's how he he knows. Like right. Like he like puts in like a, a stamp like a stamp on it. Yes, it's happening and it's going to yeah. be okay. So basically, it's not contradicting. It's gam ve gam, also and also, also and also. So I thought about it, like in in my profession, how can I understand it in a different way? So I'm looking and I'm seeing like you can understand, for, um, for example, that your parents did everything they could for you and also understand that whatever they chose to do hurt you. It's also and also. You can understand both. You can see both of, both of the as-if contradictions or understanding that you can love somebody and also know that it's not a healthy thing to leave this person in your life. This is also something that you can understand both. It's like contradicting, but it, it can be together. 
or uh, realizing that it's very scary to take the next step, but also knowing this is the right thing to do. Meaning you, you can you can live in that moment with this con- as if contradiction, or understanding that you want a very healthy uh, marriage, but also know that your past wounds are making it difficult for you to get there. So it can be, it can live together, both of the things. So for me, it was um, a very big realization, um, understanding that you can be afraid of failure, but also believe in yourself. And um, it, it made me look different on things later on. And after I, I, I understood the, the, this uh, thing, it was very... Do we have uh, more time or yes. where are you? Are you still uh, concentrating or you want to finish? You good? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to the third uh, pasuk. Uh, you want to open the translation? Help me with it? So the third pasuk is saying, If, if you... If you uh, <laughs> Number three. If a camp encamps against me, my heart shall not fear. If a war should rise up against me, in this I trust. Okay. So this uh, uh, verse is continuing the first two that we had before. David um, the basically declares, I'm trusting. This is what he's saying. Bazot ani boteach. This is what I'm, I'm trusting. I'm, I'm, I'm. I have complete confidence. I'm not worrying. The word deaga, worry in Hebrew, has all the first letters of the alphabet, except bet. Aleph, gimel, dalad, hey. Not the second one. The, the bet doesn't have. Yeah. Aleph, bet, gimel, dalad, hey. No, Aleph Gimel Dalad Hey. The bet is missing because bet represents bitachon, safety, security. Meaning, when you don't have bitachon, when you're not secure with with Hashem, you're worried all the time. That's why, because worrying, you're missing the the feeling of bitachon, of safety and trusting in Hashem. Um, so David Melech is is expressing his uh, sense of security and safety in Hashem, and Rashi is saying, "In this I'm trusting." What he said before in the fir- in the in the first verse. And uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Adin Eben Israel is another mefaresh, another commentary. He say, in saying, whoever is uh, sheltered by Hashem doesn't need to be afraid of anything. And David Melech, who is the poet over here, is confident that Hashem is protecting him and covers him, and that's why he's thanking him. Even if there's enemies around him, even there's a camp of war, he's not afraid. His heart is quiet. He's secure with uh, the, with the Shem's um, um, security, shmira, security, right? Protection. Yeah, protection. Thank you. Even when there's a lot of enemies around him, and even if those, the, even though he is the minority, right? Even if the sage is going to become an attack on him, even if they are going to come and stand up and fight against him, he is not worried at all. Why there's no worry? Because there is bitachon. That's why. So they're asking what exactly the Vida Melech is so secure with. Because it says in the Pasuk you just read, in this I trust. What is this? True that this. What is this? What, is, what does it mean in this I trust? What is the this that he is trusting? Bazot and Ibotech. 
<coughs> so we said, Rashi says, he is trusting the first pasuk, the shelter of my life, okay? Arab Hanan Purat comes and say, if that's true, the pasuk should have said, the Hashem I'm trusting. Why are you saying in this? What is this, this thing? Where, where it comes from? Bazot. What is this? So now we're going to do a little gematria. You know what gematria is? Mm-hmm. Gematria is when you're taking the value of the letters and you are uh, summing them up and you're finding other words that has the same value, numerical value. So it's like they have the same, since they have the same numerical value, they are similar in their meaning or their weight. Or you're going to see. So in Hebrew it said Bazot. Zot. He's talking about Zot. Bazot anibotech. This. So Zot in Gimatria is 408. This is the Gematria of 408. One of the most beautiful um, piyutim that we are saying during the Yamim Noreim is called Venatana Tokef. Venatana Tokef, I don't know if you remember it, whoever in Shul reads it. And in this piyut there is a wonderful line that is saying, Utshuva, Utfila, Utsedaka, Ma'avirin et Roa Gzera. Meaning, when you're doing tshuva, when you're praying, when you're giving tzedakah, all those three things, gonna um, make the decree pass, be- pass above you. It's not gonna touch you. That's why, by the way, they say, and it's written, "Em mazal Israel. Israel doesn't have luck. All the rest of the world have luck. If it's written in the stars, this is what's going to happen. But Israel is above the luck, above that. Why? Because we can change it. How we can change it? Tshuva, v'tfila, u'tzdaka. We can change whatever is written, we can change with that. In the Siddur, when you look on those three words, tshuva, tfila, u'tzdaka, there are three little words. If you have seen Machzor, you can read it. There are three little words above each and, each and every one of them. We forgot my book at, at work. We know that. Part. Okay. So above the word Tshuva, we already discussed Tshuva, so you know what Tshuva is. It says Tzom. Tzom meaning fast. Above the word Utfila with pr- and prayer, there's the word Kol, sound, like voice. And above the word Tzedaka, there's the word Mamon. Mamon means um, uh, money, um, something like that. All those three words have the same same gematria. Tzom, fast, is 136. Kol, voice, is 136. And Mamon, money, also 136. When you combine all of them, you get 408. Meaning that when David the Melech is saying Zot, he means Tzom Kol Mamon. He means Tshuva Vetfila Utzdaka. This is what he means. When he's saying, in this I trust, this, he means Utshuva Utfila Utzdaka. This is why he's trusting. Because he knows that he can change whatever is already written, whatever was already decreed. This is amazing. He knows that as long as he is glued to it, as long as he is attached to it, as long as he is not letting go of this, of this, of this zot, utshuva, utfila, utzdaka, he's safe. He's safe. There's nothing to worry about because he's not letting go. No, don't let go. Don't let go. Doesn't matter what happened. Don't let go. Because this is what's going to save you. This is what's going to return you again and again to believe and to know that you are safe. And you have nothing to worry about. Even though 
there is a camp and enemies and it's starting war and he doesn't care. He's, he has nothing to worry about because he's trusting this. What is this? Utuva, utfila, utdaka. This is what he's doing. Doesn't matter what's going to happen around him. Doesn't matter all the world. And this is Sgula. And the David Melech is revealing to us. And Sgula is basically a law inside the nature that Hashem created. Sgula is not from, it's not purple, it's from the world Mesugal, capable. It sounds like purple Sgula, but it's not, it's not purple. Um, Ibn Ezra, Rabbi Avraham ben Meir, is suggesting another beautiful uh, commentary, and he says, it's Bazot, it's also something that he's talking after this Pasuk. There's other Pasukim after that. And he's talking about something else. He's talking about what's coming after this Pasuk. And what's coming after this Pasuk is the Vida Melech, he's saying, One, one thing I asked from Hashem, this is the only thing that I'm asking. Shivti bevet Hashem, kol yemechayai, sitting in the house of Hashem all the days of my life to, to view the pleasure and the grace of Hashem and to visit his palace he's saying one thing I'm asking and then he's yes. giving a list <laughs> Ibn Ezra, I'm not going to tire you with that, he's bringing all kinds of um, proof to why it's okay to look at what he means from other places in the Torah. I'm not going to bother you with this right now. But he's saying, basically, he's not only relying on the security from what happened in the past, but also from what he wants to happen in the future or what he believed that's going to happen in the future. Ra'ayah, Rav Avraham Yitzchak HaKohen Kuk, that today was his uh, your site, um, also says the same idea. He's saying, Vayesod HaGadol, his Hebrew is very hard to translate, but I'll try. Vayesod HaGadol, the, the greatest um, foundation, that your good will is everything. And the entire um, talents that are in the world are not, they are only the fulfillment of this, of his return, basically, of his desire, of his will. And Arav Chalan Porat says, and this is the greatest emuna and bitachon that there are. There cannot be any greater emuna and bitachon than this, which is the fulfillment of the, of the sense of security in Hashem, the fulfillment of being um, glued and attached to Hashem. I'm going to cancel because I see that Timmy is uh, falling asleep, oh, okay. so I'm going to... It's okay, Mommy, it's okay. Oh, wait, uh, everybody drinks wine, makes me yeah. sleepy. That's why she took a sip. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try and sum up so that, that the anticipation for what's going to happen in the future, what he's asking that's going to happen in the future, this is what gives him the, the strength and the power within to cope right now with his reality, with what's happening. When you're putting meaning and purpose inside something, it's, it's easier. It's easier to do it. This is what David Melech is teaching us. And then I thought maybe Viktor Frankl also saw that, because this is his old Torah. You know who Viktor Frankl is? You heard about him? Okay. Viktor Frankl was a psychologist that was in the, sh in the Holocaust <coughs> and um, 
he he understood what Nietzsche basically said that when you have um, you know, he said uh, he who has a why to live can bear almost any law any law any anyhow right um, and basically what Victor Frankl saw and witnessed in the Holocaust that people that had a meaning or something to look forward to survived the people that didn't lose the um, the intention, the people that didn't lose the meaning, that didn't lose the the, 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 the what, the what for, what for to live, they they, they survived. So from this came a whole theory in psychology. And the one that was killed. Uh. <laughs> well, he, he said that by by finding meaning and reason to live, even in even through impossible situations, this is how you survive. He's saying in English, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude if any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. This is basically what he's saying. So it, it's, it's all his theory is lo logotherapy. There's a whole theory around it. it it's very smart. So this month of Elul is coming to remind us what's the meaning. Why are we here? What do we need to do? What's the reason? Why do we need to get up? Why do we need to do what we do? Because if you know, it's like, it's like putting it on ways, you know. You know where you're going. So when you know where you're going, even if you're taking the wrong turn, you know, you recalculate and, and you, know where, you know where you're heading. So it's a whole different story. Um, I'm just going to say one thing, one thing for, to, to conclude. It's, as humans, it's very hard for us to become strong and trust in Hashem when things are not going the way we want or the way that we need or when, when God forbid we are going through difficult things painful things um, challenges whether it's uh, emotional or physical it's not hard we, we, we're humans we, 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 and we're not David Amel we're regular humans and, it, and it's not easy but this year I learned something and I want to share it with you what I learned new this year. There's a bracha in Birgot HaShachar that we're saying, and usually we're not really paying attention to what we're saying in the morning. We're going like blah, 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 running through it and we're not really paying attention to the world, words. One of the brachot is Baruch She'asali Kol Tzurki. Translation? Hashem made me the way I'm supposed to be. No. The way he wants. Whatever I need. No. Oh, that's what I need. Oh, that's what I need. Whatever I need. No? Blessed him that did for me. It's different for Ashkenazim and Sparadim. So I cannot tell you which number it is. Yeah, it's the first set. Or Ashkenazim, it's still at the end. Sparadim, it's at the beginning. It doesn't matter. Blessed who, bless, blessed he, that did for me all my needs. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So, we're saying, okay, I understand, I have a lot, Baruch Hashem, I have everything I need, I have a home, Hashem, I have children, I have a husband, I have a fridge, I have a car, I have food, I have money, I have health, not perfect, but I do have, I have, Baruch Hashem, I have, I have closet, I have clothes, I have friends, I have, I have a boat, I have, Baruch Hashem, I have, I have a wallet, I have, I have a lot, but excuse me, I also have a lot of things I don't want. And I don't need. And that makes my life really difficult. What do you mean? Baruch Shehasali Kod Tzorki. How am I blessing that? I'm thanking him for giving me things that I don't want? 
Yes, thank you for everything I want, but what about what I don't want? Mm. Excuse me? This is I don't want? And this is the new thing that I was taught. And it also, like, blew me away. Yeah. Made a whole difference in the way I'm looking at things. Even what I don't want is what I need. Mm -hmm. Meaning that even the things that are difficult for me, or hard for me, or painful for me, are there because Hashem knows that I need them in order to grow. Because, as I said at the beginning, two things move us. Pleasure and suffering. suffering. So if Hashem wants me to grow, Ki Adam we have to grow like the tree in the field, we have to grow. Hashem wants me to grow. He knows which direction He needs to push me to. And the only way for Him to do that is to give me something that I need to be pushed with. So that's why even what is painful and even though what's, what is uncomfortable and what is unpleasant and what I really don't want, I really need. Mm -hmm. My teacher says it's an exercise machine for the soul. Yes, I Every don't... Every hurdle is a machshir kosher l'neshama. Yeah, <laughs> well, when, but again, when you look at that, at this bracha, it, it's mind-blowing. What, what does it mean? That, that, that give me everything I need. I have so many things I don't need. Take it away from me. Mm -hmm. But no, the understanding that I need this in order to grow. I need Because if I'm comfortable, I'm not going to move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only way for me to move is to be uncomfortable. Yes. This is what's going to move me. Some people are not moved. Some people will stay put and I'm miserable, I'm the victim, I'm poor me and, and they're not going to move. So they're going to continue and suffer. Some people become what I call professional sufferers or professional <laughs> victims. No, really, they become really good at that. But if you understand that it's there for you, then we are in a whole different, um, oh, yeah. like continent, like you're like, in a different planet. It's it's a different planet, and and this is amazing to me, really amazing to me. We we saying it in the prayer in the morning. Yotzer or uvore choshech, ose shalom uvore takol, creating light and creating darkness making peace and creating everything. But this is not the original. The original, which is in Yeshayahu, not in the Sidur, he says, Yotzer or uvore choshech, ose shalom uvore ra. Creating light and creating darkness, making peace and creating bad. Ani Hashem oset kol ele. I am Hashem doing all of, all of this. Meaning that Hashem is giving us all of that. But inside all of that, the light and the darkness and the bad, there's something amazing inside. Ose Shalom. Meaning that it is possible to make peace between all of those pieces. Mm -hmm. But in that we're going to talk about some, some other time we're going to talk about that. So, to summarize, this month is a diamond inside a tin barrel that we need to open and reveal it. It's a month that it, if, if we're only going to hold even the edge of it, just a little bit, say those, this chapter twice a day, you're going to create a movement inside of you that it's going to be a movement of coming back getting closer to Hashem, of, of being, having more security, more, more safety, more glue to Hashem, that, and the understanding that we are 
completely guarded and very, very private, very ashgaha pratit. How do you say ashgaha pratit? Like personally, personally watched, okay. very, very, very precisely watched over. And, and understanding that whatever I have, whether it's sweet or bitter, is really everything I need. It's mind blowing to me. So, I'm going to bless all of you that we're going to have a very good Chodesh Elul. That to remind you that uh, the arms of Hashem is open to receive everybody. He has a lot of uh, room. And um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to finish with the, with the blessing. I'm going to uh, open, I'm going to close this and...